Welcome back to Cash Budget Insights, where I'm working on seeing if this whole cash budgeting thing really works. I'm personally tracking every dollar using a zero-based budget due to my daughter's chronic illness, as well as controlling some of my own emotional impulse spending on the really hard days. I would love to have you give this video a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. That's a free way to throw a little support my way and help this channel grow. If you haven't heard it today, I want you to know you are awesome, you're valuable, and you have a purpose. Now let's dive in. Well, friends, I am here after a little unplanned hiatus. Um, I don't know if you guys saw my last video, but my husband had lost an employee and we are self-employed and I had to step up and help fill that role. It's been actually really fulfilling, but I have not been involved in the company for years. <laughs> and it was a little crazy, a little stressful. I worked really long hours initially just to really immerse myself in the whole process again. And I, I just, it was like drinking out of a fire hose, but the more days that I worked like long hours, I just felt it was like riding a bike. You know, I knew what I was doing again. I'm getting more comfortable. I thought that I could juggle both things, the YouTube channel and that. And I was wrong, especially that first week. It was like way too much. Okay. So that's that part of my life. My plan is to still do all of my videos as much as I can. I might have to cut down on um, maybe like the online reconciliation. I might have to cut a few videos, but I'm still gonna do at least one to two, three would be amazing videos a week. I just really love this community. I love this space. It's been so helpful for me, but you know, life happens and sometimes you just can't do all of it. And my personality is very much do all of it. And I am trying to keep myself sane and not run myself ragged. Another crazy thing we had happen actually last week, uh, my daughter has not spoke for, well, she started losing her speech in September of 2022, and it was very slow. And by January of 2023, the end of January, it was completely gone. And she could only like grunt um, to express things she wanted and hand signs. Last week, sorry, I'm going to try not to cry. Last week, for the first time, um, it was really weird. At the end of the evening, my daughter motioned to me and she said, I think I can talk. And I was like, what? You know, and she kept pointing to her head and like making this motion. And I said, okay. And it was really strenuous for her. Um, I really have never seen anything like it in my entire life. And it was January, or January, it was um, February 8th specifically, that day will forever be etched in my mind, that she spoke uh, for an hour and a half, and then it went away. It was the weirdest thing. I have no idea what is going on inside of her body, but she, it was really hard for her initially to start talking. And then it was like, once she said, mommy, daddy, she said our dog's name, Stella, and then Darcy. And like each time she was saying a new word, it took, it took a while for her to do it. And then it was like the more that she started talking and like pushing through whatever kind of block there was, the words just kept coming easier and easier until she was talking in full sentences. So I, of course, called my parents. I called my brother. Um, and so she could talk to her best friend, who's her cousin. Uh, which her cousin was bawling, my brother was bawling, my parents were bawling, I called my sister, she was bawling, um, you know, and then of course, and my husband's parents, uh, and called her doctor immediately, and he was like, I'm tearing up in the car, like, I'm on my way home, because it was like, it was like 5 or 5.30, I think, um, and then, you know, my husband and I were bawling, like, hyperventilating, snot, crying everywhere, just praising God, thanking Jesus, that he gave us that window. Um, we, she was talking so clearly. I thought, oh my gosh, okay, like we're going to have this forever. And then she started grunting again and it, she was like, I can't talk. And so I don't understand how God made our bodies. I don't understand what's going on, but I do know that somewhere in there healing is taking place and somewhere in there we're on the right track and her brain is obviously trying to protect itself. Um, unfortunately, the next day when she woke up, she was incredibly sore because she had been exerting so much stress on her body, like to will herself to talk. 
and also was crying and was hysterical as well because she hadn't been able to talk for a year. And uh, unfortunately, the next day when she woke up, like she was like, why am I sore? Like, I, I don't feel very good. And, you know, my husband started to explain to her what happened. And long story short, she did not remember anything. She didn't remember anything. She didn't remember talking. She didn't know she talked. She didn't know what she said. Um, it, it was very odd. But, you know, when you're dealing with um, autoimmune encephalitis, which is what her one of her diagnoses uh, is, um, I don't know. We're still learning. We're still trying to understand. So we're taking time to really just keep really good data of what's going on. And we will be following up with her doctor um, just to let him know what has transpired. So he knows that she started talking, but we haven't since told him kind of what's happened. So, you know, I'm optimistic that we're on the right track, but it is so emotionally, um, it's just a lot. It's just a lot. And, you know, as nice as it was to hear my daughter speak, it was so hard to have it taken away again so quickly. Um, but you know, God's good and I trust him. I trust him completely. So that is like my week in a nutshell, which has been absolutely crazy. So we've had some, um, you know, really miraculous things happen. And then on a logistics side, I had started filling in or really um, started a new position with my husband's company. And it was just a little bit more mental stamina than I was prepared for. Uh, but I am back here and I am ready to cash plan. So that was a very lengthy you know, where I've been, but I don't know how to summarize either of those things much shorter than that. So today, I think all we're going to do to just touch base again is to go through my envelopes, which honestly, I really haven't spent much out of because I've been so busy, um, which has also helped my online spending. So that's a win. Uh, but anyway, we're going to go through our cash planning. So I'm just going to go through my envelopes. I'm going to see what I have in there. This is prop money, FYI. I wish this was all cash. Um, but this is prop money that I've been slowly transitioning certain envelopes and categories into uh, prop money. And I think for March, I will continue that. But I, I'm still going to have categories that are just cash because it just works better for me. So let's go ahead and start with my grocery envelope. So I think what I'm going to do is basically decide do I want to leave the money in here? Oh, I had haircuts. So that's in here. That's not usually in here. I'm going to take that out. And as we go through, I will put that back where it needs to go. Um, so anyway, what I'm going to do is see what I have in here and decide if I want to roll it over or if I want to apply it to my savings challenges, which I'm going to be doing a video later in the week. Y'all know that's my favorite. So definitely going to still be doing those. Okay, so for fun, I currently have 50 in fun. Um Oh my goodness, I'm gonna challenge myself and I'm gonna actually put this in my savings challenges because I think I can do it, guys. I think I can do it. So I think for this week, I'm just gonna do another 25 to tide me over. So that's gonna be a 20 and a five. Okay, and then for grocery, I have 20 left over. That is gonna be going into my savings challenges. So for grocery, I'm gonna do 325. So three, 20, and a five. Okay, and then next we have household. Household, ooh, I'm gonna keep household in here because I household I use for things like cleaning products and stuff, and I am going to be running low on that. So I am gonna add in another 20 for household. And then what do we have next? Kids. All right, kids, I have 20. Oh, goodness. What do I want to do for kids? I'm going to keep kids in there and I'm going to add 10. Actually, I'm going to do 15 to kids. Let's do a 10 and a 5. Okay, and then miscellaneous, I have 50. Ooh, I love my miscellaneous envelope. Okay, I think what I'm going to do is keep my 50 in here. Ooh, do I want to challenge myself? I, I kind of feel... No, I'm going to keep it in there. And I think what I'm going to do is give myself... 15 for miscellaneous. And then maybe next week, if I have stuff in there, I can go ahead and 10 and a five, um, put that into my savings challenges. So I don't usually do my cash planning like this. And I actually really like it because if I haven't spent a lot, it's such a good way to 
take money out of your envelopes and put it towards savings. And yeah, so we'll see how this works. I'm going to try doing it like this. So for out to eat, I have 60 in here. I'm going to take one of these 20s out and put it towards savings. And then, hmm, what do I want to do? I think I'm still going to cash fund this 25. Yeah, I'm still going to do that. 20 and then 5. Okay, and then that takes care of my wallet. All right, so then we're going to move into my brown binder here, which just has some other, I don't know, things I don't necessarily need to carry in my wallet all the time. You guys, I made new envelopes. That's why these look different, and they're all uniformed, except I have these in category color. I know that it's my own thing. I don't even really know how to explain what I've done, but I've basically made, um, you know, like all the like beauty or like personal care has like the same background. And I just, I made like categories for myself, like pets has, you know, medical has this. So anyway, when I'm flipping through, I kind of know like they're in like a master category and that's how I have them linked in my savings account at the bank as well. So it's just a little bit easier for me to look at the background. They're I don't know, color coordinated. They're more like pattern coordinated. Um, anyway, all right, so I don't have these in the same order. So medical, I'm calling it care in labs. So for this one, um, I'm definitely not gonna be taking money out of here to go into my savings challenges. These actually need to build up. So these will be keeping the cash in here. For medical, I just always like to give a lot and we have a appointment coming up in March, March 14th to be specific with my daughter's doctor. So I'm going to be doing a hundred in here and I'm going to be doing a hundred in pharmacy. So we're going to do one and one. Okay. So, all right, let's look at clothing. Clothing. I do want to beef this up. So right now we have 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 1, 110. So about 112 in here. I'm going to put another 50 in here. For clothing. Okay, and that's gonna be 150 in there. Okay. Um, haircuts. Okay, all my boys just got haircuts, which is great. So I still have 20, 40, 60 in here. I am going to be putting, I'm gonna go ahead and probably put another 20 in here just to keep it stocked. Um, hair 20. That's gonna be right here. Okay. And then what's next here? Ooh, nails. I do have a nail appointment. I'm trying to decide. Now I do have enough in here, but I think I'm going to add, hmm, I'd like to keep it, yeah, I'd like to keep enough in there for two nail appointments so I always have a buffer. So for nails, oh, I don't even have that on here. Let me add that. That's the other thing I did. I separated my categories a little bit because I was pulling nails from self-care and I just kind of wanted to keep that separate. So nails, I am going to put another 20 in here. Okay. And then groomer. Okay. This is coming up as well. What do we have? Two, four, six, eight. That's 130. That should actually be plenty. Hmm. I think I'm not going to give to the groomer this time. And then once I have their next appointment, I'll start adding in there again. For home goods, ooh, I have been really tempted to buy some shelving. Um, okay, I think I'm going to actually give 50 in home goods. I really want to get some bookshelves for my office area. I think I told you guys I'm somewhat of a nerd. I love board games, and I have a huge board game collection that I've collected for years. And I'm not talking about, like, Monopoly. Like, I'm talking about, like, I don't know, uh... Azul. And I'm trying to think of ones that you guys might know. Like one of my favorites is called Castles of Burgundy. I don't know. There's there's this whole board game part of my myself. I don't know. So anyway, I have all these board games. I absolutely love them. They bring me so much joy and they're in my basement right now. And I would really like to get shelving up in like the office area to have them out. Um, yeah. So I would like to save up for that. I'd like to get it probably from Ikea. That's pretty popular with board gamers. Um, and then pharmacy, we already said we were going to give 100 to. So I've already updated that. Okay, self-care. I must have missed that envelope because I should have one right here. So self-care, I've actually changed it to be called Cairo because that's basically what it is. It's like massage and chiropractic adjustment. 
And that's just something that we invest into ourselves because we are doing a lot of heavy lifting um, carrying my daughter. So she fully relies on us to like for mobility purposes. So for this, I'm actually going to buffer this one up to 100 and we're going to put 100 in there as well. Okay. I must have totally like missed that envelope when we were flipping through. Okay. Then the last thing I'm going to do is savings challenges. So for savings challenges this week, I'm going to give a little bit more and I'm going to give 175. So as always, the savings challenges is kind of a nightmare for me to figure out exactly what denominations to give. So I think I'm actually going to do some bigger bills this time with, with hopes that I can like cash condense the envelopes a little bit. So I'm going to do 520s. Whoops, what am I doing? Five times 20. There we go. Okay, so that's going to give us 100. We have 75 left. I'm going to do two tens, so minus 20. Um, and then let's do... Oh my gosh, math is hard. Okay, so I'm going to have five 20s, which is 100. Two tens, which is another 20. Um, five, no, oh my goodness, 10 fives, which is 50, and then five ones, because math is just not happening for me right now. Okay. Oh boy. All right. Let me see if I can add these up. So we have five ones, which is $5. We have 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 fives. That's going to be $75 worth of fives. We have two, three, four tens, which is 40. We have five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. So 11 20s, which is 220. We have two 50s. And we have three, four, five, six. Six 100s, which is 600. Okay, and then we have 650. Okay, so I'm getting 990. Let's see. I'm already assuming that I did something wrong, but we'll see. We'll see what we did here. Okay. Okay, that is not right. Okay, I made a mistake right here and wrote 50 instead of 100. So let me add this up again. Okay, so I will have $1,040 that I will be cash stuffing with you in my next video. I am also going to be adding 50, 60, 70, 80, $90 to my savings challenge, uh, which is going to be in addition to the 175. I may do a separate video for this one. Oh, I don't know if I'll be able to with a 50 actually. I'm gonna have to get smaller bills for that. Ooh, we'll see. We'll see what we can do. Okay. So we will have that as well. And I'll see if there's some way I can add that in, but that is all I have for you today. Thank you for joining me on this very chatty video and I'll see you next time. And it shows if I'm honest.